Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, we're on a time limit today, and I'm a politician, so I brought my uh, timer. Very important. Um, look, um, it's an absolute privilege uh, to stand before you and get the opportunity to speak today, and I've given a, a bit of thought to the, to the things I'd like to say, uh, because I've been asked to speak on how New Zealand is going to make the leap, how we're going to lift ourselves economically and achieve a step change. So I thought today I'd be slightly different and offer a couple of personal thoughts based on actually my um, history, which is 20 odd years as an entrepreneur, uh, pretty so-so one next to Peter actually, but nevertheless, uh, and two and a half years most recently as a politician. And can I say it's a massive privilege to serve because as a politician, one thing you don't realize going in is just the sort of insights you get into so many industries. So I think uh, the practical how of how we're gonna do that is deceptively simple. Uh, although it involves a massive amount of hard work and it's already been talked about here in terms of the things that individuals need to do and therefore th the things a number of individuals in this country need to do. Firstly, uh, they have to innovate, think of things, have new ideas. We're actually quite good at that, I think, as a country. We can tick that box. We are full of ideas. Uh, Low-tech ideas, high-tech ideas, we have lots of new ideas. We're always looking for shortcuts and new ways of doing things. Put it down to isolation, put it down to history, put it down to we don't have a lot of money to sort of semi-quote Ernst Rutherford, we don't have a lot of money so we'll just have to think. Uh, all those things contribute to the fact that we have a lot of ideas. We, second thing you need to do is filter those ideas. You need to find out which of those ideas are attractive to people, which ones fill a need. I don't think we're too bad at that either because we're early adopters of technology and we're also um, slightly uh, cynical, so we look at ideas with a certain uh, cynicism. Are those really going to do what they say they're going to do? The third thing you have to do is you have to get out there and sell that idea. And I think that's a bit harder for New Zealanders. In many ways, it's not our natural psyche. The US, I think, built itself as a superpower because it had such brilliant salesmen and saleswomen. We're not as gregarious. Uh, we don't naturally want to go out and talk our, our way through. So there's some very good people that do, but that's, that's a challenge for us. Our fourth one is to keep ambition. Once you've had a bit of success, keep chasing more. Uh, once you get a company going, keep running it. See how far you can go. I do believe that too many of us check out too early once we've achieved some success. So that's the practical hows. But I think there's another how which is very important as well. How we're going to make the leap over the next 10 or 15 years depends on how we see ourselves. I think that's really important. So a lot of the key to our success is in our own heads, individually, uh, collectively, and as a country. So I want to draw you a mental picture of a small successful country not a million miles from where you're sitting this morning. It's a resourceful little country. It's a long way from anywhere, so it knows nobody owes it anything. It has to get out of bed every morning and make its own luck. It has a lot of great ideas, and it makes the most out of every natural advantage that it has. It has an army of entrepreneurs and top salespeople that move easily between Asian and European-based cultures. They fly out of that country every day into Asia and around the world, successfully selling their products and their services. And as a country, it is proud of those people, their drive and their perseverance. It understands how important those people are to its success. It doesn't waste its time debating which industry is more important than which other industry whether science is better than tourism, whether clean tech is the silver bullet, whether the dairy industry is sunrise or sunset. And its industries don't define themselves by how much support they can get from taxpayers. It is a successful country. It has many listed companies whose stories of success and challenge it follows with great interest because it is an outward-looking country that loves to see how it measures itself against the world. It has a great lifestyle. And yes, 
it has wonderful scenery. I think that that little country is not a million miles from here. We have some gaps to fill, some building blocks to make the most of. And the government has a role with policy settings, there's policy settings that are right to encourage the culture and the attitude of success. Dare I say it? A competitive tax system that encourages success and that doesn't penalise it. A focus on trade, on trade deals, and trade arrangements. A, a, a government that invests heavily in supporting infrastructure, like broadband, he said and transport. A government that understands that actually for industries and businesses to be successful, you actually have to try and keep one of their biggest costs, interest rates, as low as possible over time. A government that actually demands better results from the education and schools sector. And of course, that old bugbear, less red tape. Spookily, that's an agenda that we now have in this country. I think our Prime Minister gets it, what it takes to be successful. I think the people in this room get it. I think we have some work to do uh, for our, the whole country to get it. Ah. <laughs> a, bit of, a bit of introduction for my last sentence. New Zealand, a country of ideas, a country of entrepreneurs, a country of world-class traders, a country that takes pride in success, a country that is confident of its place in the world. We need to adopt and live that self-image. In my humble view, that's how we get there. Cheers.